Hey everybody, I'm Bob from Black Arrow Gaming, and welcome back to my fifth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy series. Picking up uh, from where we left off in the last episode, I want to start off with a comment from Tarsac with regard to how I am using my reanimators, or more to how I'm not using them. It seems like in every episode I make one very obvious uh, avoidable mistake, and in the last episode I was completely neglecting to use the reanimators to inflict despair on things before I tried to either convert or ghoul curse them. Inflict despair, as you can see here, gives units a 20% weakness to spirit uh, magic, which includes both ghoul curse and, uh, and convert. Um, makes both of them more likely to succeed. And more so than that, inflict, Descare, inflict despair can stack upon itself. So it is probably by far the most useful tool I have in my arsenal towards trying to uh, convert and uh, ghoul curse units. Um, so useful, in fact, that Tarsek suggested I actually send a reanimator off to help Ganon so that he has ways to convert things. I think that's a great idea, so I'm going to send that guy out that way. Um, I also want to... I need, I'm going to need to split up my support units here a little bit. Um, I need somebody with Heal Undead. The problem is, Heal Undead is spread a little thin. Uh, those guys have normal healing, but not undead healing. I'm gonna have to give a reanimator to this other stack here. Uh, just, if nothing else, to keep that cadaver alive. And maybe... Maybe put this... Actually, maybe I could put this cadaver with that other group. Have that reanimator babysit the spider. I'll put the spider over here, I guess. Either way, I'm going to need at least a reanimator to help keep the other group alive. Um, it, I think since these guys are coming down here anyway, I'm not going to send my Havelings army far enough up to get this Boneyard, but the Undead army is going to go there, so hopefully I can pick up a Bone Dragon or something like that. Um, I forgot about these two guys, too. So um, Anyway, that's all going on there. I just wanted to make that correction. Uh, also, pointed out that accepting the Goblin the uh, Vassal quest was a mistake said it would take too long. It's a few extra turns of waiting before I can start migrating the cities to go this city to goblins. It's probably right. He's probably right about this. And the reward that I'm getting uh, is fairly subpar. It's just a goblin big beetle, so not anything huge or particularly rewarding. Um, since Ganon's going to get a big beetle anyway, what I'm going to do is actually send... Well... I was thinking about sending him back, but now that I think of it, I think Ganon just having extra units around probably doesn't hurt. So I was thinking about sending that big beetle back to join this army to give them a... Well, maybe I should. That army doesn't have particularly powerful units. Um, those guys I'm planning on using to help clear the uh, undead from this Lich Castle, but they might die in the process. I don't know. I think this army is okay. Um, and they'll ghoul curse more stuff, plus they're probably going to get a bone dragon too. I guess I'll leave, uh, leave that guy with Ganon's army for now. Uh, one last thing, there was a moment where I could have used Slayer's Doubt to save, or to try to save, <clears throat> excuse me, a cherub from a horse that was attacking it. So that's a good idea, I need to kind of try to keep that in mind. Uh, Daniel Moe said, uh, get protection from light on my necro, which I can't believe I haven't gotten yet. I've kind of completely forgotten about that, but, uh, there it is. Also, could get exploit despair. Um, I was thinking about getting other things like, uh, inflict, I think I've actually already got them, but like the, um, inflict despair and inflict enfeebling fever, uh, that or inflict curse just thinks to lower morale before picking this up but if uh if i have a reanimator in this group that already has inflict despair getting exploit despair on the necro earlier rather than later is probably a good idea there's a lot of upgrades i need for that guy though so i'm kind of just prioritizing those on the fly um blurry intervision and tarsec both pointed out that regrowth works on trolls so uh uh, sorry, regrowth works on undead trolls, so if I had ghouled this, ghoul cursed this guy, he'd still get the benefits from regrowth. Um, Tarsic has actually told me that before. I've forgotten over the course of time, but yes, these trolls do get regrowth if they are undead, so you don't miss out on that. And then finally, Mr. Sorrybot suggested picking up a couple of shrines on a, in a couple cities that can build them quickly, just to help with the mana costs 
of terraforming, which I actually kind of want to start doing now. Um, well, I'll, I'll start doing that as soon as Embrace Darkness is finished casting. Wait, actually, there's no reason for me to wait for that, because Embrace Darkness, I'm at 20 out of 80, so I can actually abort the spell for free. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, I can abort the spell for free, and then I can go and... Uh, no, I don't want to fertilize land. It's orcs, so I want barons. And... I can't get a whole lot of them, but it's... Oh yeah, that's right, it's so salt. But I'm gonna, like, get these wetlands out of here, because those slow me down. Really, wetlands, forests, get rid of those. I think that's also wetlands. Uh... I just need to make sure I leave just enough to cast Embrace Darkness. Actually, I don't need Embrace Darkness for one more turn. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and turn a little more to Barons, I think. Because I was planning on starting producing Martyrs on the next turn in the city. I am going to take a quick break to get the Shrine uh, first. Because I'm going to need more mana for more terraforming and for other things. I've been low on mana all game. So I'm actually going to get the Shrine in this city since nothing's pending to attack it. I'll get the Wall in the next turn, and then I'll start making Martyrs after that. And then I'll go back to Sowing Salt, mostly because I can, and because this city kind of needs all of the help it can get growing. Uh, get rid of that. And, you know, I just, I'll just use the rest that I've got on those. And I will wait. I don't need to cast... Well, I can't actually cast it on this turn, um, so I'll wait until the next turn and, and cast Embrace Darkness. Should have enough mana for it. Okay, I actually completely forgot what I was doing with this guy. Well, I know I was sending him underground in general because I can dig and get extra gold, so that's actually probably what he's going to be doing. Can I get through? Unfortunately, I wonder if I can get him... Is that valid area I can move through? I think I can, if I can get him up here, I could tunnel around behind and dig out all that dirt there. I can also start digging dirt here, although I do kind of like the natural barrier it sort of makes. Um, I can dig out at least some of this, so I'll probably do that just to start getting some extra gold. Halfling army can go in here, and I'm going to send them immediately after this. Again, her whole purpose right now is pretty much to gain XP to get Chaos Rift as quickly as I can. Uh, I'll attack with the Knight. We'll see how much XP I can cheese out of this battle. Alright, well the Ice Queen's already bleeding. Um, let's see here. I normally would like to buff stuff. Uh, if I can, and she's got the casting points to do it, but I don't really have the mana to do it right now, so I'll just have her do that. I do need to guard her from those saber tooth chariots because she is a squishy halfling. We don't want anything bad happening to her. So how about just walling her off behind all of my other units? Okay, now what I would like to do... I want to get those Prowlers out of here, because they've got martial arts and their... Predator and some other things. I'm thinking about cheesing some XP out of these Sabertooth Chariots if I can. Like, maybe... I'm hoping to freeze him. She can't do that. Uh, wait a second. I'm thinking of something else. She has Inflict Freezing, not Aura of Freezing. Okay, so never mind. She can't do that. I was thinking she had a different ability than she does. But anyway, he's out of action points. And... I'll just remove all the action points from this guy. That gives, buys me a little bit of time. I'm going to run her up here. Oh, whoop, that's my knight. Never mind. Uh, 
I guess I'll run him down here. Run her over here and get the kill on this thing, which I should probably do with the crossbow. All right. Those guys, Prowlers aren't nearly as dangerous on defense, so I'll just let him take them out. And I will probably kill these cheetahs as well. Now, if I can get her to where she can kill both of those tier twos, that would be great. Um, my units are a little beat up right now. The, the Ice Queen could heal, so she can take a few more hits than the Orc can. But the Orc's getting awful beat up there, so... What I think I'm going to do is sneak back here, see if I can get a shot off. It's a 55% chance to stun. I will take that. Okay. Move her here. Again, take a hit. Take a hit. And take one more hit. That actually probably doesn't really do me any good because... Wait, yeah, it does. I may be beating my army up a little bit too much here, though. I might have to try to save some mana for harmonizing energy on the next battle. But this is all for the greater good of Halfling getting XP, so I'm going to let her actually charge in and get a melee hit there. I don't. I think the melee hits a single melee hit's equivalent to a single crossbow hit, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that. One... Two, three. The knight actually handles that just fine, so. And she can actually heal again, so. I will have her heal. I'll have her heal herself for now. Alright. I think she got a level during that fight. I would expect her to. Yeah, upgrade your hero, okay. She's already pretty well on the way to the next one. Um, what do I want for her on this level? I need to get ca Sorcery up to 70. She's got two more levels to do that, and then I get both Chaos Rift and, I think, Thunderstorm at level 13. I, I might not be able to get both of those. Um, let's see here. Inflict Spirit Breaking is fantastic. That would be a nice thing to, come, uh, to stack with Ganon's army, but she's sort of got to lead her own group down here, so... That is okay. Strong will is good, but I think I need to save. I think I need to save upgrade points right now. I could probably do the math and maybe pick something else up, because like I have four, or I have six available. Sorcery is only seven. Actually, I am gonna do the math. I am calling this an advanced strategy series after all. By the way, it occurred to me I can't really pronounce the word strategy very well if I say it after other words. I can say strategy fine on its own. But at the beginning of each episode, it always comes out like strategy or something like that. Can't help it. Nobody's pointed that out, but I'll figure I'll, I'll point out my own flaws every now and then. Okay, so Sorcerer... Level... Oh, no, I don't want level 11. I want level 13. So Chaos Rift takes 5. Thunderstorm takes 10. I'd really like to get both of those at the same time if I can. But I can't always do that. Um, they just pair really well together. Uh, so that's 15 that I need, and I need 7 for, I think it was 7, oh, I gotta click on this, I need 7 for Sorcery 5, so if I take that 7 and add 15, that's 22, I have 6, and I'll get, yeah, it's not gonna matter, I'm not gonna be able to get both of those, the important one that I get for sure is is Chaos Rift. But now that I think of it, I'm going to save the points anyway, because the more points I save, the earlier I can get something after Chaos Rift. So maybe I could get something small, though. Because if I get five upgrade points every level, and I have six now, in two levels I'll have 16, and it would take 22... Yeah, I'm actually not that... I'm sure I could figure that out, but I don't want to sit here. Actually, you know what? I will just... Uh... Yeah, I don't want to sit here just thinking about that um, too long. I think there's probably something I could pick up, but I don't want to slow down the series any more than I have to, so... Wait! Oh, crap, okay. For a second, I thought I forgot to launch the battle. <laughs> Alright, we're good. 
Actually, you know what I can do? I'm just going to pause the recording, then I'll splice together the, the two video clips, and then I can actually figure that out. Okay, so I went through and actually counted it out, um, and I figured that on a level, level 12, I'm going to have enough casting points to, um, to be able to get sorcery with four left over, because sorcery costs seven. I'm going to have six plus five is 11, so 11 minus seven is four. And then on level 13, I'll have nine. It only takes five to get Chaos Rift, so that leaves me with an excess of four. If I kept that and moved on to level 14, I would only have nine again, which I could not use to get Thunderstorm, which takes 10. So I may as well spend four points now, is basically the bottom line. Um, and I'm going to actually probably spend those on Strong Will. Uh, it's a nice thing to have. Then she can have a different piece of headgear, and I don't have to make a Strong Will headgear for her. So I think in the long run, that's probably the way to go. Um, I could give her more health, which is tempting because she's a halfling and she's really fragile, but I've done pretty well keeping her safe. I don't see any reason that's going to change anytime soon. I just have to kind of be careful. So I'm going to get strong will and we, that shouldn't slow down her progress towards chaos rift at all or thunderstorm for that matter, but it's all the rest of my points have to go into those. However, okay, so I can close that and move on. Uh, that cherub just got down here. I'm gonna try to slip him past those tigrans. That's a really big city though, so they might try to pick him off, but I really do want to see what's over there. All right, and then this little guy was on his way down here. There's another city I have just on the edge of meeting. I think I'll probably meet them on the next turn. Uh, the orc is just standing there. Tarsak pointed out that those wisps, now that I've started this quest, are going to massacre him if I don't move him, so I suppose I will move him. Question is, where do I want him to go? I kind of want to send him off to explore, help the cherubs fill in some of the underground. He's not a particularly useful fighter for Ganon's army, so that's probably what I'm going to do with him. He's not even ranked, uh, so... Or I could send him north and, and see what else is up here. Uh, fair. you know what? I think I'll send him north. Because he can actually get those haste berries and move a little further, too. So, that works. Let's see what else I can find. Well, I might just get picked off by bandits. But if I don't, there's a pile of gold there I can snag. Uh, alright. This guy was headed south, I imagine, to defend that city, if I remember correctly. Uh... Maybe I should just build a road straight through here because it's a faster route than taking the road around. Gotta hold off on moving the builder until the path is safe. And then these guys can chill and wait for the Necro army to get uh, all their movement back. Can't do this yet, so I'm gonna have to exit again. Dragons want an alliance proposal, which is tempting, but also crazy expensive. It might be worth it though. I think I made peace with them earlier for this purpose. They're in a good location, I think, um, and I don't have a way of attacking them anytime soon. So I think I'm gonna drop the money on this. Uh, let me exit real quick and check my alignment. I'm at evil minus 400. As long as I'm at least slightly evil, I'm fine. So I'm gonna take that. It's not a great vassal city. It doesn't have much in it, but it is generating a little bit of gold and mana per turn. That'll make up for itself in the long run. Um, I will probably leave them as a vassal for a while because I've got these guys uh, right here, but this at least prevents the computer from vassaling them or from easily conquering them. I mean, it, they gotta go through two red dragons to take that city. Although hopefully they're not quite that far west yet. And I'm also gonna be nice to those goblins because of race governance reasons. Okay. I can't cast any mana, ma I can't cast mana, I can't cast magic because I am out, uh, I'm down to six, so we just have to go to the next turn and see what happens. Maybe in between turns is when I should have done all that counting for the sorcerer. Um, the balance between making any series both interesting and enjoyable is a tricky one, but like I said, I call this an advanced strategy series, so I should probably play like it every now and then. Uh, I do tend to make, like I said, at least one major mistake in every episode, but hopefully I can keep that at mostly a minimum. It's always one of those kind of duh moments too, like right after, like as soon as I see the first comment pop up 
on my phone, it's like, oh my gosh, why did I make that mistake? I've played Necro many, many times, so there's really no excuse for me to forget that reanimators have inflicted despair. In fact, um, reanimator, or I'm sorry, reanimator, Necro's probably my second favorite class, to be honest. Uh, I still lean towards the Arch Druid. I just, I love the archers. I love how mobile they are. And I love how powerful animals can be in this game. But I think the Necro comes in as, as probably a pretty close second. Um, I know that, I guess from what, I don't play online competitively, but I know that from what I've little I've seen or heard about competitive play, a lot of people say the Necro's kind of broken. It's so powerful. And I can see how that would be the case if you use it correctly. It just, it takes a little extra micromanagement, but it can be so worth it. My computer's almost done with their turns. There's apparently a lot going on, but, oh yeah. Well, that guy's gonna die anyway. And not by bandits, by animals, actually. Uh, I can't get away from the monkeys. They'll throw poo at me. So we're just going to auto this, get it over with. That's too bad. Might have to have Ganon's group go up there and deal with that camp, grab the gold. There's also that Tigran city nearby, so that's probably where they'll go anyway after wrapping things up here. So I've kind of set myself on a timer here. I do need to remember to cancel and redo that. Um, but I think Ganon's army is actually going to make it to complete this quest in time anyway. So there is an interesting structure right there. I'm going to at least take a peek to see what's inside of that because I'm passing right over it. Uh, here, grab the haste berries and then just stop on here for a second and take a look inside closely matched but no way in heck am i going up against two dread reapers um that that's a good way to get some of my more powerful units killed including the troll i will absolutely not risk that troll under any circumstances so that lich castle is going to have to wait until later in the meantime Ganon's army can go there, and I think next turn or the turn after they'll reach the Wisps. Just in case, I'm going to cancel Absorbing Population and then do it again just to reset that timer because I'm going to migrate this to uh, Goblins. So cancel and reset the timer there. All right, I'm going to need these Raptors in fighting condition to take on that, uh, that Lich Castle down there. Um, I need to actually get a cohesive army put together for this person. It's sort of scattered units right now. Oh yeah, and I need him to catch up. Which he can run through the, the swamps to do that. So it's sort of scattered units here. I need to organize and group up the most powerful ones. First off, let's bring everybody kind of together. So this cadaver is actually probably not worth keeping, I don't think. Um, I already have one cadaver who's on his way to gold. I don't really need two. I would rather put the reanimators together uh, to be able to to have them kind of work a little more closely with my necro. I'm gonna I'm going to disband this cadaver. There's not really even anything I can explore with him, so he's just a little drain on gold. Um, I'm going to put him here, and then I'll put the Necro. I like that Black Knight, so I'll add him. I need to keep leveling that snake. Or I need to start leveling that snake, but he's not going to come with me into the Necro castle, so maybe it'd be better to give experience to other units for this upcoming battle here. It's probably these guys. Throw him in here, too. Uh... Well, you know what? These guys are kind of going to be sort of suicide soldiers. I don't see the point of upgrading them. They're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dread Reapers and will probably die in the process. So I think I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try to get XP for those animals instead. The only problem is a little too slow. One space away from being able to do that battle on this turn, so we'll have to wait for now. Eventually, that army is going to be really good once those guys evolve, especially that ghoul serpent. Holy smokes, I just noticed how many notifications I have over here. Okay, I got the uh, strong will item, so that is good. Plus one vision range. Um, I don't need this mind control immunity shield anymore. Yeah, nobody's going to use that. I'm just going to sell this now. 
Uh, thick shield, leave shield of the optimistic. Probably nobody will use that. I'll keep it just because extra resistance is kind of worth more than defense, so maybe I'll want to swap it on. And sun shield can be good in the right situation too. So I guess I'll hang on to that. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'm good there with items. And then, okay, that was the sun shield. Great temple, building, laboratory. I think I do want that next. And probably a master's guild, so I'll go ahead and queue that up. Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna let this finish and then build a shrine here too to help out with mana concerns. And I'm gonna... S well, I don't need to cast Embrace Darkness on this particular turn. I actually probably should cast... Well, now that I have a new city, I think I should cast... Should I cast Beacon of Faith, or is it more important that this city get... Is growth or, or gold more important, is what I'm wondering. So I could cast Beacon of Faith, or I could cast... Sancti no, it's not Sanctified Sides. Where's the one that gives me more mo Oh, Paid Absolution is great out over here. I don't have enough mana for that. So I will go ahead and get Beacon of Faith active on this city here. And then next turn, I'll still have enough... Should still have enough mana for, uh, for getting Embrace Darkness cast here before I start producing, uh, before I start producing my, my Martyrs. Grogar offers a, oh, uh, ooh, a small army, but coming, well, I don't want garbage units. If I could get a Shock Trooper reliably, I'd take that, but since I just vassaled those dragons, I'm going to take that gold and replenish my stockpile a bit. I'm gonna send another, another priest down this way right away. And let's see, I've already got one in that city. I've got a second one here. I'm gonna keep producing them. I'm gonna have another one go up to the capital after, after it's done producing. Shooting star, oh crap. I hate shooting stars. All my strategies don't necessarily work when Shooting Stars is active. Okay, well, we've got a little animal problem here, so I think I'm going to double back just one space to deal with that. The Builder can sit this one out. I know he's been really, he's been really excited to get involved in some of the action lately, but he needs to take a break. Uh, Karzin has... Well, he's going to be slower in the forest, but he's got barons running, so he'll catch back up. So I'm going to use him to initiate this battle, and he'll still catch back up with the rest of his units. Unfortunately, cannot get this snake. So that is a shame, but it will make for good XP. All right, Karzin's got the disgusting stench. Don't want have other units hanging out next to him if I can avoid it. Um, I would like very much to kill the air elemental as quickly as I can, I think. Well, you know what? No. No, it'll just lightning shock all the time, and it can't stun me like that snake can. The snake is the number one priority, I think. The monkey sprinting and flanking something can be a problem, but by itself it's not going to kill anything. I think I want to target the snake first. Problem is, Karzin can still be stunned, so I can't just send him in willy-nilly after that snake. I'm going to have to be a little more careful than that. I need to remember to put the Manticore Rider in the right slot. Okay, so all that being said, how am I going to do this? I'm going to start with the Elves. Does either of these guys have an Inflict? Inflict anything? No, they get that at Elite rank. They have slick Scorching Heat, though. Or at least, yeah, that one does. So I guess what I'll do is I'll do that. Because that lowers their, their physical attack strength. I was thinking it lowered defense, too, but it does not. That's okay. Uh, what I will do is just soften him up with range attacks, I think. I actually would kind of like to kill the monkey, but I think for the time... Th these guys are tanky enough they'll be okay if I leave them, I think. I'm gonna 
not have the elves be standing in front when this thing comes charging in. Put the cars in here, put these guys here. Uh, Carson's just gonna have to hold ground and those guys are gonna have to deal with the the stink. Because the snake can attack. Actually, this is okay. I may have just gotten the spearman killed now that I think about it. I better leave him on defense. Oh crap, I got more units down there. I just completely didn't move in. Well, Lucky worked out well for me so far. Kind of a sloppy battle. I wasn't really quite sure how to approach this one. My plan with Karzan was pretty much to run in and smash stuff, and against that snake, it doesn't really work so good. Alright, well, everything is under control now, so... I don't know that I want to do that with him. I think I want Karzan to try to war cry charge that thing now. Now that I can protect it in case something goes wrong. Well, he's panicked, so... But Karzan's stunned. Alright, well that's fine. I want to turn the elemental around. That does practically nothing because it is highly resistant to physical damage, but this will hurt a lot. Ooh, and the crit. I'm actually really glad that crit because I don't think I was going to be able to kill this thing otherwise. I would have probably had to smite or something. Okay, uh, I guess I will let Karzin... Oh wait, I want to heal. Make sure I get a chance to use heals. And it'll be panicked for another turn, so... I'm gonna hold ground. And that way these guys can get a chance to curse as well. That one succeeded, so this one can't curse. And that's just about all the XP I can squeeze out of that. So I'm gonna... Actually, I don't want Karzin to take a hit. I want it to run back in, and then I want Karzin to back up and charge it. Or actually, I could just melee attack it. Its health is low enough. Yeah. Alright, cool. Another level. Alright. So, I'm gonna put the mana core there so I don't forget to do that later. Two turns. Two turns, and then he gets a nice new pet. can't quite build the fort on this turn, so that'll have to wait, but I can attack with Karzin on this turn. Alright, I want them to flank somebody, whoever's probably got the highest resistance, I guess and preferably the highest health. Looks like that's going to be Karzin, probably. I just don't want all of them flanking him at once. I think what I'm going to do is move up carefully and try to kill one really quickly, if I can. Can I hit that one from here? I can. So that's what I'll do on the next turn. Move both of them up and make sure I kill that thing. I have to plan for extra hits because they can get lucky. And I hate to say it, but I've seen three luckies in a row more often than I would care to admit. Like just back to back range attacks. Normally it's the nuisance halflings dodging everything. Oh, hey, look, the Builder's in on this one. Well, he kind of had to be because of the position. But he just really loves getting involved, and I appreciate the effort. All right, so that one is facing... Yeah, that one is facing him. So I need to open that guy up. That one is also facing an annoying direction. Uh, let's see, I can sprint to get past this guy. 
I'm just gonna javelin him. Move the elves away, get a couple hits. Carson can go here. Fire once. There we go. I decided not to try to cheese that one, because the wisps can be... I don't want it to stun something and quickly kill it really fast. I don't think it could have, but... The wisps are a little harder to micromanage because because of the fact that they have a uh, static shield. Oh yeah, and I forgot I get an upgrade for him too. Uh, tireless comes at seven, I think, and I want to check to actually I want to check to see how much that costs. Level seven for the warlord gets. Oh no, that's not tireless, but blood blood brothers is ten. Right, it comes at level 7, and that costs 10. So I actually do need to save for that. I guess it's level 9 is probably tireless, yeah. Okay, so I can afford to spend one point with him. That's it. Uh, it's not going to be a ranged strength, that's for darn sure. And I could probably pick him up fire or frost protection. Something to... Maybe frost would be nice to offset. Or shock protection, so I can't get stunned. That might actually be pretty useful. Uh, I, you know what? I am going to pick up Shock Protection, I think. Why not? It's 20%. Doesn't hurt. Let's do it. Okay, so Beacon of Faith is active. Still haven't decided what to do with the rest of my mana on this turn. Gonna have to hold off on that for, like, one more turn, guys. And now I'm only slightly evil. What a shame. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with those orcs. Do I want to sign a peace treaty with them, or do I want to declare war on them and stay more evil? I kind of want, like, orc race governance XP. And I won't be able to get to them for a little while, I don't think. I guess if my halfling army were to continue east, that's where they would wind up. There's the Naga up there. I don't really know what to do with these orcs. Whether I should befriend them and get race governance, or attack them and just stay evil. I guess since they're orcs, and I'm slightly evil, but I've got, I've got some wiggle room, I will probably move forward with making them a vassal for now. If nothing else, extra resources. It might be a mistake, but I'll try to take whatever opportunities I can to declare war. I just want to, I just want race governance as fast as I can. I'll say, let me know when you're ready to talk. It's hard for me when I'm playing evil because a lot of times, like, I want to do nice things because I like vassaling cities a lot. I think it's a I, it's kind of my preferred strategy, especially for cities that are far away. But when you're trying to stay evil, you have to take that into consideration. Okay, so capital city needs to make an orc settler. Because that's going to be going right here. The city down here has to start. I think I'm going to start with a builder's hall, probably. Follow that up with a storehouse. And then I've got these guys and let me know when you're ready to talk. That's really probably it uh, as far as like being nice to cities. I can't really afford to do that much more until I have a way of becoming more evil. Oh, that is enemy borders right there. So I probably don't want to go that way. I will, there's not much further east I can go though. I'm gonna back off. So I'd rather avoid taking the chance of meeting them if I can, but now I at least know where one of their cities is. They're on the other side of this lake right now. So we have a little bit of intel for the first point in this game. That would put them at almost exactly the halfway point on the map right now, which is kind of what I was expecting. That's not good for me because, as you can see, I haven't really filled in my area, but that will start happening a bit faster now, I think, now that I've kind of got some units producing and some more powerful armies being created. Alright, let's go here and clear out all these nasty birds. 
Unfortunately, they're going to charge. That's too bad. All right, these are all melee units. I think I might just let them come to me, honestly. All right, I'm going to back her up here and have her heal herself. And then, let's see, you can go... I want the sorcerer protected behind all the other units. That's the plan. Setup like that should work. And let's see. She could afford to cast star blades on something. Nothing can hit her there, so... How about... How about you? So I know I want her to have the kill on this unit. Everybody else will probably just suicide themselves attacking my units. I guess I can just let it happen. It's faster that way. Nice job, guys. Definitely don't want any of this group drinking from that well. Now we can get some treasure. It's always nice. Oh, uh, the cherub's involved. I actually don't really want it distracting units. Uh, I do want it to go... You know, if it moves, I think this army could go two... Yeah, because the road lowers it to three. I actually am going to need it to kind of get out of the way. It could go here. They'll catch up with it. The halflings group will, and then they can kind of guard it before it tries to fly through Tigran territory. Okay, hopefully this battle I can a little more easily squeeze a little XP out of. Um, I might go ahead and just harmonizing energy that night. That'll give her a nice chunk of XP. Is she doing 755 out of 800? And then the Ice Queen may as well heal herself. It's exactly 20 health. The Draconian is a little bit beat up, and I'm going to have him kind of camp back here for the moment. Okay, so I don't really want cavalry units taking hits from that deep guard. Actually, I think the deep guard's probably the first one that needs to die, if I can manage it. So let's move you up a little bit and see if we can stun him. Okay, cool. I don't think I'm going to be able to drain movement on all these things, so I'm going to kill a couple of them. I'm going to start with this guy. And I'll probably take this one out too. I'm sure the other... It's annoying. I'm sure the other deep guard will will defensive strike something, so... Or not, the other axeman will defensive strike something. Probably the halfling now that I left her wide open. Let's give her a little protection. I, that's fine. Do I have enough mana to harmonizing energy again? I could. I'm kind of... I don't know if spending it on XP like this is the best idea, but... Part of me kind of wants to. I just know, I know I need enough, but I'm going to have enough to cast Embrace Darkness on the next turn. So, I'm curious actually exactly how much she gets from this. I know we talked about spell calculations before. 775 right now. Uh, so if I cast this, 
I know it's like a divisible by five, 780. So it costs, I got five XP and it costs 20 to cast. So maybe it's like you divide it by four. The cost of the spell divided by four determines how much XP you get. That seems to be what just happened there. So I knew that I know that more valuable spells give you more XP. So and then she can run around and flank. Unless he got lucky. So I sort of blew all our mana, but I picked up so I guess I picked up mana too, so I forgot about that. I want to dig here. I don't want to dig all the way through the wall yet. Oh, there's more here I can get. This cherub's made it a furthest east underground than anybody. I got mana over there that I should probably go pick up. Okay, and just like that, my mana problems are pretty much solved. Uh, there is another Lich Castle there, so that's probably worth investigating. A Vault of Knowledge. Uh, in the Magic Library, nothing else in particular note. I'm gonna go this way, because there's animals down there that could be trouble. Alright, I'm gonna have the Cherub grab. Grab that uh, treasure on the next turn. I'll leave him in the water just because it's slightly safer if in case like anything came out of the shadows. Um, if something did, only lost souls could get me. But if there's like a reanimator or a deathbringer with the group, they won't be able to cross onto the water to get him. So it's a little safer staying there. And then he, I want to stay here because if he tries going all the way through and there's other tiger units in the area, they might chase that cherub down and I don't really want that. Oh, and I got to keep... Uh, the cadaver with people that can heal him, so I'll we'll have to kick the spider out for a moment. Alright, and I think that's it for this turn. Should I start casting Embrace Darkness on this turn? Yeah, I may as well. Okay, I think I'm good. So then on the next turn, I can hopefully finish that goblin quest. And then I can start migrating the city to goblins. I need to, I really want to get the city migrated soon because there's resource potential here that I'm not getting yet. Especially that destruction node would be really nice. The two golden mines is dicing on the cake. Maybe it's worth scanning around in between turns to look for other possible city spots. I think up here would be decent enough for... Maybe that's more just a fort location, not so much a city location. I don't know that I'd want to spend the money to put a settler out there. What else do we have? That's already got a city. That would be a good fort location. Possibly city location. Maybe if I put it across the lava there. Up here, more decent gold and production. If I put one city in between, it could get all of them, but it would take a long time to grow. Might be better to do two separate ones. This is all probably long-term future, though, because I don't have a way of getting settlers out in these places anytime particularly soon. There's a runestone of cold fury right there. That's worth remembering where it's at. Uh, that could come in pretty handy for clearing a lich castle at some point. Although, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any immediately around it unless there's one to the east somewhere but the sort if there is one to the east the sorcerer's army might take advantage of that they're going to be running back and forth a little bit because they got to go back up once i get chaos rift but once they're done on the surface clearing that ziggurat i may send them back underground and have them go through and clear all this stuff and move east underground sort of just depends on what's going on though i suppose Depends on what my priorities are at the time. So it seem to be kind of constantly shifting. Okay, so let's queue up the observatory. Oh, I should have queued up the shrine in case of city auto-completed production. I'm going to queue up the shrine and then go straight to a hospital, I think. Because growth is pretty important for that city. 
then probably grab Siege Workshop and Master's Guild. Okay, card finished a men here of granite. I can actually make stone giants now. Um, Rock of Ages will get units produced at the Dwelling Dragon Slayer. I don't think that's really worth it. Um, oh, there's a Necro Lich Castle that I could potentially clear with my Sorcerer Army. Um, I don't think that's really worth it. It would be nice, but I find it pretty rare that I'm fighting dragons with giants. So I think I'm going to pass on that. Save my gold for other things. Like starting to produce giants now, for example. In fact, I think I'm just going to set that on make lots of giants and let it go. No sense in waiting to get some of those guys out on the field. Alright, so now I can make some martyrs here. I've got everything needed. Um, are they going to produce with the... No, they don't produce with any pr production level. It's not an irregular unit thing. The arena can help out uh, infantry units. But I don't think irregular units have something that gives them an extra promotion out of the bat. There is, I could get the Dark Citadel, but that's a little bit too big of an investment right now. And I only need to get, like, I think probably four of these guys. One for each army, I think. Make sure to remember to cast that. And I've got 60 left, which I'm probably going to channel towards getting Sanctified Sites, or it's not Sanctified Sites, Paid Absolution on this city down here. But I'll hang on to my mana for, for the moment. Actually, there's no reason to not start casting it because I won't finish casting it. So I can still use the mana for other things on this turn if I feel the need to do so. It'll go up. I think I'll produce maybe three more priests for now. Maybe a little more. Um, I'm just trying to guard. I guess I'll need one uh, guarding cities up north. I sort of just want to keep the front line particularly stacked in like core important cities. Probably won't guard every city, but I do need to keep like the front line cities that are going to see enemy scouts earlier. They'll, they'll be the most at risk of being attacked. Uh, I decline making friends with the elves. Can't afford to make more friends right now. All right, I might actually be able to accept this on this turn. So I'm going to kind of discard that notification for now. Karzin's army is going to have a busy turn here. Uh, I've got... Well, I don't know if they can kill the Ziggurat. That might be asking a bit much, even for him. He's only a level 6 after all. He is absurdly powerful for a level 6, but still only a level 6. So I think clearing the Ziggurat may have to wait until he's a bit tougher. Having brought Blood Brothers will help, though. I do want to see what's in there. But for the time being, I can at the very least start building the fort, which is going to go right here. Perfect. All right. And then Carson's army's top priority, clear the trade post, and then go stop any animals from causing trouble. Oh, there's another sage hut over here. I didn't even notice that until I walked up. It looked like part of the mountain range. So I can hopefully get that on this turn, too. Only a probable victory, but I have more faith in Karzin than that, so... I think I'll be okay. It is shock troopers, though, and they will break his guard, so that's worth keeping in mind. I'm gonna try to curse them, slow them down at least, and hopefully make them a bit more vulnerable to magic. Okay, that was successful. And he got lucky. That's all right. I got one of them, so that's fine. Unfortunately, because he got lucky, he doesn't even get slowed down. And I don't really want him charging head headlong into Karzin. Not yet. Karzin's not quite ready for that yet, but I will let him charge headlong into the Impaler. That's fine. Now, one thing to consider is, do I want to Slayer's Doubt something? This battle could be... I may have underestimated this battle a little bit. It's probably worth trying to slow 
some of these units down. Um, I have pretty good odds of doing so. Yeah, I'm going to Slayer's Doubt that Black Knight. I don't want him charging something. Wow, he resisted the 80%, but it still slows him down either way, so that's fine. I'm going to let... Since he's weak to magic, I'm going to let those guys kind of ruin him. I want Karzin to get the kill on that Shock Trooper. But I don't want him, the Shock Trooper, to be able to retaliate. And he's not going to do quite enough damage. The Impaler could poke him for a little bit more, I suppose. But he's going to retaliate against the Impaler if I do that. If I war cry, how much can I do? 18 and 4 times 2. It's still not going to be enough. All right, so here's what I think I'm gonna do. I need to make sure that guy dies. So I'm gonna move that unit here and soften him up a bit more. Okay, I can actually kill him, that's perfect. Because then what I can do is move the Spearman here to just whittle away at his health a little bit. And that should be enough to let Karzin finish him off. Okay, so Karzin gets as much XP as possible out of that does leave him a little vulnerable to the Impaler, but to nothing else. So, ooh, that Impaler could kind of hurt, though. But it can't flank me, and I've got Shield and Fearsome, so I'll probably be okay. I'm going to soften him up anyway, though. I'm going to stand this guy sort of here to discourage any tricks. So they're going to go after him. Okay, now what can Karzin do? A little confusing because it's just orcs everywhere. I'm going to Slayer's Doubt this guy again. Because I would like Karzin to get that kill too. But I also want him to get this kill. Because I'm really greedy. Aha! Oh, you just got destroyed. This should be safe enough. He can charge me once, but he's not going to do that much damage. In the meantime, I've got heals to spread out. How about you? Maybe you should have healed him after doing this as opposed to before. But I want a war cry just to soften him up, make sure that my hero can get the kill here. Alright. Puts me that much closer to Blood Brothers, which is good. Uh, sun Ooh, that's a nice item. That's actually really nice for Karzin, too. Because he's got barons running to take advantage of the mobility that it kind of demands. But it, he's also got you know, it lets me attack something, maybe turn it around, and I can still go into defense if I want to. It's a pressure, an item I can use to pressure the enemy. I like that. I think he's going to hang on to that. Uh, the Chain Quap of Heroes, or however you pronounce that. Um, I am going to send that to... I might send that to the Halfling, because she could use defense. Um... She's pretty fragile, so I'm going to send that her way, I think. She shouldn't be involved in any direct confrontations uh, that aren't safe, but just in case, I like to have a little extra insurance. Alright, now your group can go after these guys. There's another snake that I cannot convert, but sadly this structure does need to go in order for that city to be safe, so... I'm not going to be able to wait until I have something that can seduce it. Or get a ghoul, the necro up here to ghoul curse it. That is just the way it is. There's 
estou aqui. Ah, my turn. Alright, so the elementals are tier two, the panther is a tier two also. Uh the Panther is not that great on defense and Carson. Yeah, I'm gonna use this opportunity to get Carson some XP here. Oh he crit it. <laughs> Dang. Who wants to kill the monkeys? I think Carson wants to kill the monkeys. The snake I'm just gonna get rid of. And these other monkeys. Maybe I can let Carson get them too. Depend they'll probably sprint now, actually, I'm sure. Nope. They'll just attack a pikeman. Well, one, two, three, and then heal yourself. Then he can go down here and kill this thing. That guy can go heal. And then on the next turn, both priests can try cursing this thing. And then Karzin can kill it. After Sun Spearing, though. Oh, never mind, the Sun Spear killed it. Uh, that, a 10 gold and a sickle that gives Bloodthirsty, probably not worth it. I'll take the money. I actually have spent an awful lot of money in the last few turns, so. All right, but I did just get Blood Brothers. All right, I love Blood Brothers. That is such a good ability. So now, all of the units in his army are immune to spirit damage. See, that is Baron's, so he can run onto that. So I can actually get this Sage Hut, too. May as well. Maybe running a little over for this episode, but since when am I not? Although I actually put a clock at my desk. Imagine that, a clock on my desk. So I can actually watch the time a little more carefully now. I'm going to let Karzin take most of the hits here on this one, I think. And I'm going to try to get some easy curses off if I can. Oh, and he's panicked, which allows Karzin to go over here or cry. And maybe try to panic that one too. Yep, panic both of those guys. They're both going to run away and take attacks of opportunity. The uh, Prospector doesn't worry me at all. The Crossbowman slightly more. I'll probably kill him. Oh, how dare you. You just hide from that prospector. Ah, that predator too. Okay, sir. So here's where Sun Spear becomes really fun. I can do. Oh, he's just out of range though. That's too bad. Oh, if only Carson had sprint or something. Oh, that's okay. He's panicked for how much longer? One turn. You know, even if Carson's turned around, he's going to be fine. I'm going to take the opportunity to kill that one. And that one will spin around. It'll flank Carson on the next turn, but I'm not too terribly worried about that. Just in case, though, I'm going to take out that Prospector. Oh wait, no, he had one more turn before he that wore off. Okay, that's fine. 
anything else these guys need to heal. Alright then, so more race governance experience, it's time for the orcs. Well, always for the orcs, because it's my starting race, as we discussed in the last episode. Um, yeah, and then I guess from here, Karzin can kind of do whatever. I could go up and grab that magic library, it's a little out of the way though. Um, I can also go ahead and take this city as my own and start developing it. I think that's probably what I'll do. 223 gold, it's more happiness, but or I mean more good points, but I'll try to offset that. More race happiness for the orcs. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Should I demand a tribute first? Five hundred relation for one hundred and thirty-three gold, but I'm gonna vassal them anyway. I'm not sure though. There may be some rule in the game that you can't absorb somebody into your empire right after declaring or demanding tribute from them. That might be considered an exploit, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. Ah, yeah. Okay, so that was kind of a mistake. I wasn't sure. Maybe I, I probably should have saved the episode before. Or I, I should have ended the episode and then asked everybody in the comments. Uh, but that's okay. They can stay as a vassal for a little bit longer. Dang it. Yeah, I kind of thought there might be some rule in place to prevent you from exploiting that. I've never really tried it before. I'll take that, fly over here, try to, oh, well, well, it was going to happen eventually. Okay, well, I've met the enemy, and all the other enemies just met me. So now, mana becomes a much bigger issue in channeling points, both of those two things. I'm going to try to finish Storm Magic anyway, but after that I'm going to have to start channeling mana. That is... A Naga Matriarch can swim, so I should probably kind of get out of here. It could probably chase me down if it wants to. Well, that's unfortunate, but you can only avoid meeting the enemy for so long. Eventually, you gotta come to blows, so it happens. Uh, should I try to take this on this episode, or should I wait until the next one? I think I'll wait until the next one. I'll go ahead and move this guy. Let me get a little more gold here. And then I think I'll save that battle for the next episode. That might all, battle might be a little more involved. There's quite a few units in there. Several are sphinxes. So that one could take a little bit of time. Also, they have a wall, a stone wall, so that doesn't make my job any easier. That actually could be a decently challenging fight, so... We'll hold off until the ne next episode for that one. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I am sorry about the little mistake up here with the Orc Vassal. I honestly wasn't sure how that worked, so now I know. Hopefully I can remember going forward. Otherwise, I think things are looking good. I'm going to have little more income here. I do need to remember uh, to, I need to remember to convert that mana node. Um, as a matter of fact, before I end the episode, I probably won't forget to cast Paid Absolution, but I might forget to change that mana node. So I'm going to abort that spell and go to Transform to Destruction node so I can get that as soon as that fort is done on the next turn. Otherwise, I will probably forget about that. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. Let's take a quick look at the at who we're up against here. We got the Frostling Dreadnought. So that's not the worst thing I could run into. Um, not the easiest for me to fight either. I would love to see... I wouldn't mind seeing a Necromancer. 
I don't want to see a rogue. Rogues terrify me. But uh, I'm, I guess I'm okay with a dreadnought. So, and uh, let's see, specialization. She's got creation adept and two of keeper of the peace. So, in case anyone's interested in that, here is the overworld map for anyone interested. Again, point of contact with Frostlings is right around here. I do know they have Frostmere, so they're actually pretty close to my dragons, so I'm sort of glad that they're my vassal um, because they can defend themselves now a little more effectively. And then let's talk about Underground. I do not know as much about the Underground, but I am working on it. All right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it, and I will see you in the next episode.